Namaste. Namaste. I honor that space inside of you that is peace, love, honor, and respect. When you are in that space in you, and I am in that space in me, we are one. The space where the whole entire universe dwells. So thank you for coming tonight. By a show of hands, how many are here for the first time? And so about half of you, the rest have been here before. So for you first timers, a little introduction to the Emotional Martial Arts series. And the reason we call it Emotional Martial Arts because um, emotions, as hopefully you'll come to understand in greater detail, uh, have a powerful effect in our whole being. And it's easy to get out of balance, to get out of alignment. And so the idea of the Emotional Martial Arts Satsang series, and Satsang is a Sanskrit word that means seeking higher truth. So we're here to seek a higher truth about emotions, perceptions, the physical body, and our, and our thoughts. Tonight's Emotional Martial Arts uh, is the story beneath the story, one of my favorite topics. And I want to start out by sharing with you two of my best teachers. The first teacher is stand-up comedy. And some of you have heard me talk about how 20 years ago I saw an article in the San Diego Tribune about a class at the comedy store in La Jolla to do stand-up comedy. And I'm reading it and my heart begins to palpate, to beat very fast and hard and I'm getting sweaty and nervous so I'm knowing that I'm conflicted I'm I'm full of fear yet a part of me is feeling excited so I say Howard you want to do this do it so I challenge myself to walk through my fear and get up after eight Saturdays on the following Monday for graduation to perform stand up in front of live people no dead people there, just live. Fortunately, it was a user-friendly crowd, and um, I, I made it, and I got some laughs, and then I was hooked. I was hooked for about two years, until December 10th. It was a Wednesday evening, 1997. There was a Make-A-Wish Foundation um, charity comedy event at the Comedy Store in La Jolla, and I was number 11 in the lineup, and I was still very much a rookie. And um, the guy before me was the kind of comedian that picked on the blonde in the front row. <laughs> Have you been to comedy clubs where they do that? Yeah. So for everybody else, it's like, whew, at least they're not picking on me. So it was that kind of sort of vulture humor. So when I got up, I just started into my routine and people weren't paying attention to me. The worst thing that could happen. Now, if I was more experienced, I would have gone up to the blonde in the front row and said, I'm a psychiatrist, are you okay? How are you feeling? That bad comedian really beat you up, but we're not gonna do that now. I didn't know how to do that then. So instead, I'm on stage and people are chatting and I'm getting a few heckles from the darkness and I'm like, oh no, this is the worst thing. I hurried my set, I got off the stage and that's when it helped me to crystallize the committee, the three committee members that we all have. So one committee member is the child, another committee member is the teen, and the third is the parent. So let me show you this with a slightly more detail. Um, <clears throat> so my child, the child, I assigned five emotions, fear, sadness, guilt, shame, and worthlessness. The teen, anger, resentment, jealousy, betrayal, those four emotions. And then the critic or the parents, their prefrontal cortex, thoughts, beliefs, judgments, conclusions, story. So I got to know my committee really well, particularly on that night. My child was feeling hurt guilty, shameful, worthless. My teen, mm, anger and resentment and jealousy and betrayal. I was jealous that the other comics had laughs and I didn't. I was angry at the crowd for not laughing. And my critic, 
said, Howard, who do you think you are? You're not a comedian, you're a doctor. <clears throat> so <laughs> I listened to my critic for about two years. I quit comedy, I quit it altogether, and, uh, and then I got my footing. I got my footing a couple of years later, and um, so comedy has really helped me to walk through fear, to disentangle judgment, to get to know my committee better, because this is the committee that's reactive, that's not feeling safe or heard or understood. So we've got the scared child, the angry teen, and the critic. Now, when we're feeling good, the child can be the wondrous, creative, playful child. The teen can be the enthusiastic, engaged, adventurous adolescent. And the critical parent can become the unconditional, loving parent. Conceptually very sound, experientially challenging to do. And that's what I want to continue to help share and show what I've learned uh, from not only comedy, the other great teacher, my most challenging patients, great teachers, because they taught me I didn't know caca, <laughs> because they weren't getting better. They weren't getting better. And so that challenged me, that invited me to learn how to convert caca to holy caca, <laughs> right? Because from manure to fertilizer, and fertilizer to rocket fuel. It's all caca, we might as well make it holy caca. And, and Deepak Chopra, Deepak Chopra might say, you cannot plant positive thought seeds in garbage because nothing will grow. But if you convert the emotional garbage to compost, everything will bloom. So that's that's the payoff when we put our focus and our energy in shifting out of reaction mode, shifting out of survival, fear-driven mode, and into a place where we can stand in our truth.